girls. I got my parent. Good evening, boys and girls. I promise you, they are never this quiet. Ever. Ever. They're shouting at me all day long. Well, we are beyond a packed house. I think I've squeezed every inch. I do appreciate your patience. Um, they are very excited. I know you are excited. Um, we are excited this is a great way to end the year. It has been a blessing to be your children's principal. Um, I, you know, not everybody can say they love coming to work every day. I can honestly say, I mean, there are definitely some days I'm a little bit more tired. May is one of those months. But they are an awesome group of kids. I have been doo-wopping for the last month and a half for sure. So I know that they are going to do a great job. And so we are, you know, you, wherever you can squeeze in, um, we have squeezed the children in as much as we can. they got to get up and down off stage. So Miss the Bows, I guess you're going to rock the hawk. Okay. went to the Army. The first U.S. satellites went into orbit. Families moved to the newly built suburbs where dads went to work, but moms, for the most part, stayed home. Kids drove tail fin cars to sock hops and soda shops. They played with hula hoops and, for fun, stuffed themselves into cars and phone booths and whatever else they could find. But aside from the rubble gun nostalgia,
gave up her seat, and Jonah saw and invented the vaccine for polio. While Haley was rocking around the club in the 50s, Bobby Jaron was singing about Matt tonight. He actually rubbed his charred choppers, flesh glass, as a result of a bet that he could not write a song that included the phrase, Splish Flash, I was taking that. He won the bet and laughed all the way to the bank when his song hit number three on the billboard.
for the first time in American history, African American music musicians rose to prominence in a growing rate of success. Little Richard's Tweety Fruity broke down bass in its creative vibration and its mean song that launched the album. It is still one of the top charts as one of the most influential pieces in American music and is still up today.
Center. It took place right here in Jacksonville. Based on the pandemonium, Elvis Presley had generated the last two times he played Jacksonville, Florida. Florida. Colonel John Parker, his manager, booked it for six shows over in, over in August of 1956. All six shows would be at the Florida Theater, a medium-sized venue that held about 2,200 people. Curtis Elvis, not yet the proclaimed king of rock and roll, had such a hold over Jacksonville girls that parents enlisted help from the Jacksonville judge, Mary Ann Goodick, who insisted that Elvis meet with him before performing. The judge also attended the first three of his six concerts. On stage, Elvis opened with his hit, Heartbreak Hotel, and threw his hits at once. Gunning whispered to the lawyer in the theater. But then, Elvis caught himself and decided to have some fun. Wait a minute, I can't do this here. I can't do this here. Elvis told the audience, Instead of shaking, wiggling, and jumping around, Elvis stood perfectly still. Then he wiggled his little finger with his, his usual movements, and the crowds loved it. Elvis never returned to Jacksonville until tonight. Backed by popular demand, it's Elvis! Elvis!
Flying planes were a big hit in the 50s, be it spaceships or birds. The 1950s saw a great increase in science fiction. However, the 1957 launch of the Soviet rocket Sputnik made the interest and concern about outer space very real. The clever chef Lily married two American interests, rock and roll in space in a song Purple People Eater, crossing to the billboards and R&B listed. As for other things that fly and rock, Rock and Robin is a song recorded by Bobby Day in 1958. It was, day it was Day's only single hit, becoming a number two hit on the billboard, Hot 100. It spent one week at number one in R&B sales, and thanks to the Jack of Five, it still is a big hit today.
has a fascinating story that begins in Johannesburg, South Africa. A group of Zulu singers and dancers recorded a song called Mbube, Zulu for the Lion. A copy made its way to New York City in the early 1950s where it was saved from the slush pile at Decca Records by the legendary folklorist Alan Lomax. Who, without listening, sent it to Pete Seeger. Unable to understand the lyrics of Mbube, Seeger transcribed the central chant as Wimbledon. And that became the name of the song as recorded by the Weavers and released in early 1952. It was later picked up by the Tullers to become the Lions of the Night and, and went on to become not just one of the most one of the most number one songs of this day in 1961, but one of the most covered, most successful pop songs of all time.
Please drive home carefully and come back again soon. Good night.